Hello and welcome to The Wargamer and you're joining me for another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. This time I'll be showing you how to paint Griff Hounds using the range of Citadel paints to do so. Now although I'll be showing you how to paint in a particular scheme during this video, I'll be giving you a list of additional paint schemes and the paints needed for them at the end of this video. Now before I go on, I just want to say a huge thank you to Alchemist Workshops for providing the miniatures used in this tutorial. After assembling your miniature, the first task is to prime it, and I've used a grey spray primer for this, as I find this is much easier to paint over with bright colours at later stages. Once the priming is completed, the first area we'll be tackling will be the actual skin of the Griff Hound itself. And in this particular scheme, I shall be using Rakar Flesh. And I would recommend mixing in a small amount of water here, roughly one part water to two parts Rakar Flesh. This will thin down the paint enough so we can apply it evenly over the surface of the miniature. Once the first layer is dry, we can then apply a second layer, and this will give us the best coverage possible. Following the application of the Rakar Flesh base coat, the next step is to apply some shading into the recesses, and for this I'll be applying a wash of Seraphim Sepia. Again you want to water this paint down slightly, just using one part water to one part Seraphim Sepia and applying it across the surface of the skin. Now that we have some shading, we can start applying some of the highlights, and for this I'll be using a Shabti Bone. Now we want to use this on a very small brush and very lightly paint some lines, picking out some of the muscle definition in the forearms and hind legs. And remember, mixing in just a small amount of water with your paint will really help you achieve those thin lines. The next area to paint on this miniature will be the feathers and the head. And for this, I'll be using Cabalite Green. Now, you want to just mix in a small amount of water here. Again, one part water to two parts Cabalite Green will apply us to get a really nice and even base coat across the feathers. Once the first layer is dry, then you can apply a second layer. And this will give us a really nice, strong base coat to work from. The next step is to wash over the feathers using non oil. Now this will pull into the recesses and really bring out the detailing in those feathers. Again, mixing in some water with our wash, roughly at one part's water to one part's non oil, will give us a much more subtle wash across the miniature. Now I want to focus it more towards the bottom of the neck and then make a gradient of lighter paint going towards the tip of the head. An effect that we'll be enhancing in later steps. With the Northern Oil wash dried, the next step is to start applying some highlights to the feathers. And for this, I'll be using Warpstone Glow. Now you want to use a thin brush with just a small amount of paint on the tip, just to very lightly pick out the feathers themselves. In addition to highlighting the feathers, you also want to paint the top of the head using Warpstone Glow as well. Make sure that you pick out some of the detailings around the eyes and also the ears as well. The final task in painting the green areas is to apply a final highlight using Moot Green. For the step, you'll want to focus your attention on the detailing around the Griff Charger's head. Now, I'll be focusing particularly on the ears and also around the eyes as well. Now, if you want to add some more detailing to the feathers themselves, you could also use this to apply an extreme highlight to the very tips of the feathers as well. With the feathers completed, the next step is start painting the beak. Now, I want to start off with a base coat of XV88, and we want to apply this over the entirety of the beak. Again, mixing in just a small amount of water here, roughly two parts paint to one part water, will really assist in getting the best coverage possible. Now that we have a base coat, we can now begin by applying some highlights to the beak itself. And for this, I'm using Tau Light Ochre. Now, you want to apply this mainly along the crest and also tip of the beak, and also around the mouth opening itself as well. Again, just a small amount of water here, roughly two parts paint to one part water, will really help you control the flow of the paint off the brush. We will now begin in work on painting the black areas of the miniature. And this includes the leather harness and also the claws of the Griff Hound as well. Now, we're starting off by base coating these areas with a bad and black. Now, when applying your bad and black, be very careful not to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted. Again, just mixing in some water with this step will not only give you better control over the brush, but also allow you to get a better coverage of paint over the surfaces. At the moment, the claws and the harness are looking very flat indeed. We want to bring out the detail here by using a highlight of Eschen Grey. Now you want to focus this highlight along the raised ridges of the claws and also the raised sections of the harness itself, focusing mainly along the edges. The final step in painting the claws and the harness is to apply a second extreme highlight of Mechanica Standard Grey. Now we want to focus this particular highlight on the upper edges of the black area. So for example, the tips of the claws and also the upper ridges of the harness itself, wherever the harness is closest to the top. Again, we just want to lightly drag the brush across these edges to create a nice thin line and it gives us the impression of light hitting these surfaces. With the matte areas of the miniature completed, we can now begin work on the metallics. So we're starting work on the chest plates and any adornments and painting all of these areas, first of all, with the retributor armor. 
Make sure you're exceptionally careful when applying your metallic paints as it can be quite tricky to overpaint them at later stages. With the base coat of Retributor armor completed, the next step is to wash over these gold areas using Seraphim Sepia. This wash will pull into the recesses, bringing out any details on the miniature, and also enhance the colour of the gold by darkening it ever so slightly. Now before we start highlighting the gold areas, we want to base coat the silver metallic areas of the miniature. So this includes any uh, buckles or rivets that we may see across the miniature. We just want to apply this base coat of lead belcher across them. As with all previous base coats, make sure you just mix in just a small amount of water here, just to improve the flow of the paint. Once this has been completed, we can then start highlighting over the silver and gold areas using Stormhost Silver. And we just want to focus this along the edges of all of the metal areas. Now the next few steps are completely optional, and this is for applying markings to the skin of the Griffhound. In this particular example, I shall be applying some leopard spots, but first of all, we want to darken the colour of the back by applying a wash of Seraphim Sepia. This will allow you to build up layers steadily and get the best gradient possible. The first paint I'll be using to apply the spots will be Dryad Bark. Now we want to water this down, roughly one part Dryad Bark to one part water, and use this to apply some irregular circles to the back of the Griffhound. Again, make sure you use a thin brush with just a small amount of paint on the tip. The final step in painting the spots is to apply some small variation to the spots using Rhinox Hide. With a very thin brush with just a small amount of paint on the tip, you want to very carefully apply some paint to the outer edges of the spots. The alternation between the lighter and darker brown colours will make these spots look much more natural in their appearance. In addition to the green and tan colouring that I use in this tutorial, there are several other schemes that you can apply to your Griffhounds. To use these schemes on your own miniatures, simply replace the paints used earlier in the video with those on screen that I'll be showing shortly. For example, to achieve the pale grey colouring of this Griffhound, simply replace the Rakar Flesh, Seraphim CPA and Shabti Bone of the previous steps with Celestra Grey, Nihilac Oxide and Ulthran Grey, using the exact same techniques as described earlier. So that concludes this tutorial on how to paint Griffhounds. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below. To be kept up to date with all of my future videos, do be sure to hit the subscribe button and check out both my Facebook and Instagram pages, which you can find links to in the description below. Now I just want to say a huge thank you to Alchemist Workshops for providing the miniatures used in this tutorial. If you're looking for up to 25% off the RRP of Games Workshop products, you should definitely check them out. You can find a link to them on screen now and also in the description below. Additionally, if you'd like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which has really helped me in producing future tutorials. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.